Hey everyone, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. So, as many of you may know, I'm a woman in long-term recovery, but I'm also a CARC, a SERPA, I am a Narcan trainer, and I'm a rape crisis counselor. Okay, good. No glare. Got rid of the glasses. Um, if you look in the description box down below, you'll find the link to my Amazon wish list, which I use to help people in my local community. Um, and... Uh, right now it's like sorely needed um my county's floundering as i'm sure everybody else's is but if you could take a look i would super appreciate it um i'm low on baby food now i have baby cereal but baby like snacky food things uh i could use some and also down below is my patreon some other things that i've been involved with my merchandise and a bunch of other you know just goodies all my social media and whatnot um so so, you guys have been asking and asking, and I kind of wanted to wait till I was off parole, but here it is, strip club story time. So, these can get a little juicy, so um, I have to be very mindful of what stories I tell, because some of them are in very bad taste, to be quite honest. This one is um, how I got fired. <laughs> Believe it or not, I got fired from working at a strip club. When I used to live in Long Island, I used to work at this club. Um, I don't even think it's there anymore. Um, it was on Sunrise Highway, and it was in, uh, like, Lindenhurst Bayshore type area. It was called, oh my God, I'm going to totally draw a blank because I want to remember what it's called. Oh my God, what was it called? I, I'll, I'll think of it and I'll edit it in and let you guys know. But anyway, so I I had been, I was new to Long Island and I hadn't been dancing for probably like two years at the time uh, because I was so heavily involved with drugs. And I moved out to Long Island to um, move in with my friend, and her two-year-old son at the time he's like 22 now so this is how long we're going back okay um and my friend danielle lived out there and i moved in with her and um long island is very not city like and i did not know that and i had never lived anywhere else and uh if you like don't have a vehicle and things like that like there's buses but it's like really weird and cabs are really expensive i decided well i'm going to go this at the time this club wasn't fully nude it was a bikini bar um and i was like well let's give this a go let's let's see how much money you can really make in a bikini bar right okay turns out you can make really good money um, I went and I applied and the guy, uh, will say Jack, uh, I went and I applied and I was like, so I was like, what's my audition? And he was like, you just had it. And he was like, I like you. He was like, you, you can start tomorrow. And I was like, all right. So I absolutely had uh, nothing that was suitable. So I, I remember I like borrowed some clothes off Danielle and like had like a cute panty and bra and whatnot. I needed like outfits and stuff, but I needed a night of working. I, I even wore like regular heels, like I didn't have anything. So I danced, I, I whatever. And all night long, Jack kept coming on to me, coming on to me, coming on to me. Um, he was like, I'll drive you home so you know you don't have to get a ride, you don't have to take a cab or anything. So I was like, all right. And Jack was actually a nice guy. Like, he, he was. He was, well, he was nice-ish, we'll say. Um, he drove me home. We went out to the diner. He drove me home. He was nice. He was like, I'll pick you up for work tomorrow, la, 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 la. So Jack and I started hanging out. Fast forward, like, I don't know. I, but okay, wait, let me go back. So I'm working at the club. I'm working, you know, four or five nights a week, six nights a week. I'm only taking like one night off now. Some weeks I'm working seven nights. Like I'm, I'm, I'm working. Like I'm making that paper. I'm working, right? 
I'm making steady customers. People now see him and I are super friendly and they think it's like more, at the time it wasn't, it was on its way to becoming something, but it wasn't. And right away, guys see like, oh, are you the owner's girl? Like, let's go in that lap dance room. Like I was actually making more money because of it. Because you always want what you can't have, right? So um, now him and I like, what do I, I'm trying to think. We went to like Mohegan Sun. I think we went to Mohegan Sun for the weekend. He was like, you take the weekend off. I'll take the weekend off. He was like, my dad will open and close. Let's let's go to Mohegan Sun. And I was like, all right, let's go. Don't threaten me with a good time. Uh, at the time, I was still partying, but very like maintaining, like not anything, you know, like while I was at work and if I had drank too much, I would do some coke, but nothing like crazy. Like I never wanted to make a fool out of myself at my job. Fast forward like six, eight months. He and I are in a full-fledged relationship. Like we're living together. Like that's it. That's my man. I'm his girl. Like we're together. People start finding out like customers, like the girls are jealous. So they're like telling customers and it's actually backfiring because now them dudes want dances with me. They want to, oh, let me get your number. Let me give you my number. Da, 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 da. And it was just crazy. Like I made such an absurd amount of money off the fact that I was dating the owner. It was crazy, craziness. Um, a lot of the girls were like real, they were either suck up to me or they were real shitty to me. Like there was no in between. Um, it was such a fake phony time in my life. It was ridiculous. Uh, unfortunately, the girls that sucked up to me, they either thought like, I don't know what, like maybe they was gonna get better hours. It's standard hours, like I don't know. I guess I never had it, so I didn't know, but in other clubs I had it, but you know, he had a schedule for the girls and they had to come in on certain days, certain times, whatever the case may be. You know, for me, I just worked whenever I wanted from the jump because he was interested in me personally. Um, I made a lot of money at that stupid little club, believe it or not. Um, I made really steady customers. Uh, when I left and went to other places, they followed me. I met this one guy there. His name was Kansas. And he was, he was such a sweet, sweet guy. He had such, the kindest eyes I've ever seen in my life. And the reason why I'm saying like his real, like saying what he called himself Kansas, because that was not his government. Um, I used to get mass amounts of cocaine for free from him and he and I used to just talk all the time like if I if he saw I was stressed out and having a bad night he would pay for a two-hour lap dance and we'd go sit in the lap dance room together just sit on the couch and talk he'd rub my feet we'd buy a bottle of champagne we would just hang out like he was just a decent dude like I just genuinely liked him um, so as more and more dudes are, are bringing me into like the lap dance room and I'm getting more popular and stuff, all of a sudden I know I get really, really sick, right? And I can't understand why. I'm like, oh my God, my stomach's killing me. Like, I don't understand what's wrong. And it got to the point that like one of the girls was like, my stage name is Deja. And she was like, Deja, she was like, you, you look green. Like, are you okay? Turns out I had a bad appendix. So I had to go and have emergency surgery um, and I had a little tiny incision, you know, for them to take my appendix out. So I was out of work for like two, three weeks, right? Like no joke, you use your core stomach muscle to swing on poles and dance and like gyrate like your hips and stuff. You do not realize how fucked up you are until you have a little tiny ass fucking incision in your side and like I laid down on the floor to stretch my back out when I came home from the hospital and could not get up because I could not use that stomach muscle. Like it was no joke, like no joke. So, um, I came back and I was super depressed because mind you, now you got to figure I am used to doing all types of drugs, all types of things. And now I'm not doing anything. I'm not drinking. I'm not doing drugs. So I'm obviously going through the drug high lows of that. So my mental health is not where it's supposed to be. I feel horrible about myself because, well, I just had surgery and I was like death and I have 
scar on my stomach now and I'm all conceited and worried about that at this point in time in my life. Even though like literally it, it doesn't even exist anymore. Like it, it was, I got, I made such a big deal about it that I got closed up by a plastic surgeon. Like I was a beast about it. I was like, I'm not going in for the surgery. I'm not having scars. And they were like, relax girl, like chill out. Um, so I ended up, um, coming home and I was like immediately that night I'm like Jack when can you put on the schedule when can you put on a schedule 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 and he was like yeah 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 next week wait 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 and I was like uh no I want to get back into it and he's like no I need to heal up wait till you come back from the doctors when you go and get your incision checked and I was like all right fair enough because I couldn't wear a bikini bottom you know like I couldn't wear my bottoms and my scar not get rubbed on so uh, I go to the doctor, he clears me. And I go, I go back to work, I don't even tell him like I'm cleared. I go that night, I go home, I do my hair, get my shit together, I go to the club, I'm in the dressing room getting dressed. And I go out to go tell the DJ like to put me on the on the rotation list, you know, to call me on stage. And I'm over talking to him and he's like, oh my God, girl, it's so good that you're back. I see all my dudes, like, like I'm gonna make money tonight. Like this is the first, I've been gone almost a month, right? Jack calls me downstairs to his office and he was like, you're fired. And I said, what? And he was like, yeah. He was like, you're fired. He's like, let's get married and I'm firing you. And I was like, wait a minute. What? Let's get married and you're firing me. So I'm like, what the fuck is this bullshit? Like, bro, you met me like this. Like you, you hired me. That's how we met. You, you were my boss. And he was like, just think about it. He was like, I'll tell you what. He's like, I'll put you on the schedule two days a week as bartending. And I'm like, let's see, make seven, $800 a night, you know, at a minimum, or make $300 a night. Anyway, it turns out you could really make some money bartending. So I was like, let me think about it. I, I didn't know what to say. You know, he gave me a ring, the whole nine yards. So I go in this at the time, I'm still speaking to my parents. I go and I call my dad. Now my dad thinks I'm bartending, right? He does not think I'm a dancer at this point anymore. My dad was like, well, do you love this guy? Do you want to spend the rest of your life with him? Blah, blah, blah. You know, and my conceited ass is over here like, hmm, look at that ring, you know? So I ended up agreeing to it. Um, I was I was very um, disappointed that he fired me. But I ended up um, accepting his engagement, taking the job bartending, and... Um, yeah, the rest of that is for a whole nother video. But yeah, mind you, I never married him. It was, it, the, how we broke up was absurd. I lost my mind. He cheated, of course, you know. And I, oh, it was just, it was just absurd. So he fired me. We got engaged and he fired me all in the same like five sentences. So um, that is just one of my crazy stripper story times. I have many more that I will tell you about. And um, I will see all of you beautiful people on Friday. I hope everybody had a great week. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.